presentations on wastewater use in agriculture is concerned with the protection of human health. The 2006 guidelines of the World Health Organization are based on a tolerable additional disease burden of no more than 10 to the minus 6 DALI loss per person per year, where DALI stands for Disability Adjusted Life Year, and we'll come to this in a moment. The new WHO guidelines don't contain any guideline values for viral, bacterial or protozoan pathogens, only for helminth eggs. This tolerable additional disease burden of no more than 10 to the minus 6 DALI loss per person per year was used by WHO in the 2004 edition of its guidelines for drinking water quality, and it's extremely safe, as people expect their drinking water to be extremely safe. This same level of health protection is applied to wastewater irrigated foods, as people expect the food they eat to be as safe as the water they drink. OK, but what does the 10 to the minus 6 DALI loss per person per year actually mean? Well, a 1 DALI loss equals 1 year of major illness, or 1 year loss due to premature death. For example, if a child of 3 dies to some disease, then the DALI loss caused by that disease is 70 minus 3, or 67 years, where 70 is the child's life expectancy. Now, 10 to the minus 6 DALI loss per person per year equals 365 times 24 times 60 times 60, that's the number of seconds in a year, times 10 to the minus 6, which is a loss of about 32 disability-adjusted life seconds, or DAL seconds, per person per year. So it's OK if you're ill for 32 seconds a year. In point of fact, DALI losses should only be applied to populations and not to individuals. So really, this 10 to the minus 6 DALI loss per person per year is really a tolerable disease burden of one DALI loss per million people per year. Now we have to convert this 10 to the minus 6 DALI loss per person per year to something we can use. First, we determine the tolerable disease risk by dividing the 10 to the minus 6 DALI loss per person per year by the DALI loss per case of the disease in question. And then we calculate the tolerable infection risk by dividing the tolerable disease risk that we've just determined by the disease infection ratio, which is somewhere between 0 and 1, as not everybody who is infected becomes ill. This table lists the index pathogens used, otovirus, the bacterium Campylobacter, and Cryptosporidium, a protozoan. The table also gives the DALI loss per case of disease caused by them. This can be thought of the disease cost in DALI's per disease episode. There's a slight difference in rotavirus cost in industrialised and developing countries, but not for the other two. The table gives for each pathogen the tolerable disease risk per person per year for the 10 to the minus 6 DALI loss per person per year, the disease infection ratio, and the resulting tolerable infection risk per person per year using the equations on the previous slide. These values tell us that a reasonable design risk for rotavirus disease is 10 to the minus 4 per person per year, and for rotavirus infection risk, 10 to the minus 3 per person per year. However, this design rotavirus disease risk of 10 to the minus 4 per person per year is extremely cautious, given the much, much higher actual incidence of diarrheal disease, which in the world as a whole is 0.4 per person per year for the over 5s. That's roughly 10 to the minus 1 per person per year. So our design rotavirus disease risk of 10 to the minus 4 per person per year is some three orders of magnitude lower than the actual incidence of diarrheal disease in the world today. Now the real question is not how many pathogens or E. coli are permitted in the treated wastewater. This was the approach adopted in the 1989 WHO guidelines. But how many pathogens can be ingested without exceeding the tolerable rotavirus infection risk of 10 to the minus 3 per person per year. Pathogens in the raw wastewater are reduced by treatment, but also, and this is very important, by post-treatment health protection control measures. These health protection control measures, apart from wastewater treatment, are the method of wastewater application, and this refers specifically to drip irrigation, the pathogen die-off that occurs between the last irrigation and consumption, and how food that is eaten uncooked such as salads and some vegetables, is prepared. And this includes washing with clean water, disinfecting and peeling. So the key question is, what is the total log unit pathogen reduction required so that the tolerable rotavirus infection risk of 10 to the minus 3 per person per year is not exceeded? And the answer comes from QMRA, 
quantitative microbial risk analysis. Ideally, it should come from epidemiological data, but we don't have sufficiently good quality data to allow us to do this. We'll now illustrate the QMRA approach by means of an example set of calculations. First, we have to make some reasonable assumptions. For example, let's assume that the raw wastewater contains 5,000 rotaviruses per litre, that 10 mil of treated wastewater remain on 100 grams of lettuce after irrigation, and that people eat 100 grams of lettuce every second day. The pathogen dose D in the QMRA equations is, in this case, the number of rotaviruses on 100 grams of lettuce at the time of consumption. So we have to determine D by QMRA, and we do this as follows. We know PIAD, the annual risk of infection from N exposures per year to the pathogen dose D, because this is the tolerable rotavirus infection risk of 10 to the minus 3 per person per year, and N is 365 over 2 as people eat wastewater irrigated lettuce every second day. So we can calculate, as shown in the first equation on the slide, that PID, an individual's risk of infection from a single exposure to the pathogen dose D, is 5.5 times 10 to the minus 5. We now use the beta Poisson dose response model to calculate D for this value of PID, and as shown on the slide, D is 5 times 10 to the minus 5 rotaviruses. And this is the number of rotaviruses per 10 mil, the volume of treated wastewater remaining on 100 grams of lettuce, or 5 times 10 to the minus 3 rotaviruses per litre. So there are 5,000 rotaviruses per litre of raw wastewater, and 5 times 10 to the minus 3 per litre just before consumption. Therefore the required log unit reduction is log of 5,000 minus log of 5 times 10 to the minus 3, which equals 6. Now the above set of calculations use fixed parameter values. For example, exactly 10 mil of wastewater remaining on 100 grams of lettuce after irrigation. But really, we can't be so certain. It might be a little more or a little less, or even a lot more or a lot less. To overcome this uncertainty, we can assign a range of reasonable values to each parameter. So we could say, for example, that somewhere between 10 and 15 mil of wastewater remain on 100 grams of lettuce after irrigation. We assign a range of values for each parameter in the QMRA equations, although we can assign a fixed value to any particular parameter if we want to. For example, everyone eats essentially exactly 100 grams of lettuce every two days. We then use a computer program that randomly selects a value for each parameter from within the range specified for it, and it then calculates the resulting risk per person per year. It then repeats this single calculation for a total of usually 10,000 times and calculates median infection risks, or 95 percentile risks, or whatever we want. This reiteration is called a multi-trial, in our case a 10,000 trial, Monte Carlo simulation. In our case it's a simulation of the health risks associated with wastewater irrigation. In the work we did here in Leeds, with colleagues from the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine, we considered both restricted and unrestricted irrigation. Restricted irrigation is the term used for the irrigation of all crops, except salad crops and vegetables that may be eaten uncooked, such as cabbage, carrots and onions. And unrestricted irrigation is used for the irrigation of everything, including salad crops and vegetables, that may be eaten uncooked. We use two exposure scenarios. Lettuce consumption for unrestricted irrigation this scenario had been developed in the mid-1990s by Professor Shuval of the Hebrew University of Jerusalem, and we extended it a little by including a root crop, onions. For restricted irrigation, we developed the scenario of involuntary soil ingestion. People working in wastewater irrigated fields inevitably get some contaminated soil on their fingers, and from time to time, and without thinking about it, they put a finger or two on their lips or in their mouth, and some of the soil particles from their fingers are ingested as a result. So first, unrestricted irrigation. And the slide shows the range of values we chose for each parameter in the QMRA calculations. There was one fixed value, 100 grams of lettuce per person per two days, and the range of values for the others was 10 to 15 mil of wastewater remaining on 100 grams of lettuce after irrigation. For every 10 to the 5 E. coli in the wastewater, there were 0.1 to 1 rotavirus and campylobacter, and 0.01 to 0.1 cryptosporidium oocyst. 
there was a die-off between harvest, actually the last irrigation, and consumption of 10 to the minus 2 to 10 to the minus 3 for rotavirus and campylobacter, and 0 to 0 0.1 for the oocysts. And finally, we allowed the pathogen constants in the dose-response equations to vary by plus or minus 25%. These are the results of the 10,000 trial Monte Carlo simulations for the lettuce consumption scenario. We calculated median infection risks for the three index pathogens for various wastewater qualities defined as single log ranges of E. coli numbers per 100 mil. Thus 10 to the 7 to 10 to the 8 E. coli per 100 mil represents untreated wastewater. And at the other extreme, 1 to 10 per 100 mil is getting close, bacteriologically speaking, to drinking water. As you can see in the table on the slide, for a wastewater quality of 10 to the 3 to 10 to the 4 E. coli per 100 mil, the resulting median infection risk for rotavirus is 10 to the minus 3 per person per year, which is the design value that relates back to the 10 to the minus 6 DALI loss per person per year. And it's good to note that the corresponding risks for Campylobacter and Cryptosporidium are two orders of magnitude lower. The table also confirms that the risks from using untreated wastewater are very high, practically a certainty for rotavirus infection, and not much lower for the other two. The table also tells us that it's not really worth irrigating with a wastewater of better quality than 10 to the 3 to 10 to the 4 E. coli per 100 mil, as the resulting median infection risks are much lower than 10 to the minus 3 per person per year. This slide gives the results of Monte Carlo risk simulations that were done the reverse way to those on the previous slide. That is to say, we fix the rotavirus infection risk at 10 to the minus 2 10 to the minus 3, and 10 to the minus 4 per person per year. And then for each of these values, the computer program determined the required rotavirus reduction in log units. In this case, no die-off between last irrigation and consumption was considered, and the footnote to the table gives the ranges of parameter values that we use for both lettuce and, as a root crop, onions. The table shows that for the design rotavirus infection risk of 10 to the minus 3 per person per year, we need to get a 6 log unit reduction for lettuce and 7 for onions. These are the total reductions from raw wastewater to consumption. Going back to the previous slide, we can see that to get to the design rotavirus infection risk of 10 to the minus 3 per person per year, we need to have a 4 log unit reduction by treatment, that is to say from 10 to the 7 to 10 to the 8 E. coli per 100 mil to 10 to the 3 to 10 to the 4 per 100 mil. But the assumptions we made for these Monte Carlo QMRA calculations included for rotavirus a 2 to 3 log unit reduction due to die-off between the last irrigation and consumption. Therefore the total log unit reduction required is 4 from treatment plus 2 to 3 from die-off, that is 6 to 7 log units. In point of fact, die-off is just one of several post-treatment health protection control measures. This table lists all these and the log unit pathogen reduction achieved by each of them. The point is that there has to be a total 6 to 7 log unit reduction, which is partially achieved by treatment, with the balance made up by some combination of post-treatment control measures. Like the example shown here, and it's worth stressing that these are only examples. One of these combinations, the one on the far left, for root crops like onions, is a 4 log unit reduction by treatment, two due to die-off, and one due to produce washing in clean water. Really, the design engineer can choose any combination he or she chooses, and the ones shown here are not the only ones, nor necessarily the most common ones. You design, you choose. The Californians chose to get the required 6 to 7 log unit reduction by treatment alone, by using advanced quaternary wastewater treatment techniques. But for most people, this is just too expensive and so it's really better to use some combination of treatment and post-treatment control measures, like the one shown here. This is a much more cost-effective approach, and given that pathogen die-off always occurs, to ignore it is simply to waste money on unnecessary treatment. For restricted irrigation, we use the exposure scenario of involuntary soil ingestion with two sub-scenarios, labour-intensive agriculture, with exposure for 300 days a year, to represent a typical developing country situation, and highly mechanised agriculture to represent what happens in industrialised countries, farmers driving tractors and wearing protective clothing such as gloves and boots, for a hundred days a year, so the amount of soil ingested would be a lot less than in the first case. A series of 10,000 trial Monte Carlo risk simulations were done, essentially as for unrestricted irrigation, 
but with ranges of parameter values more appropriate for the exposure scenario of involuntary soil ingestion. The resulting required pathogen reductions were three log units for labour-intensive agriculture and two log units for highly mechanised, and so less exposed, agriculture. These log unit reductions achieved the tolerable rotavirus infection risk of 10 to the minus 3 per person per year for the field workers. And because they're for the field workers, they have to be achieved solely by wastewater treatment because the field workers are directly exposed to the wastewater contaminated soil. Finally, we come to helminth eggs, the eggs of Ascaris, Trichuris and the human hookworms, Ancylostoma and Nicator. To protect the health of both the field workers and the crop consumers, WHO recommends a maximum count of one egg per litre of treated wastewater, although in the case of drip irrigation of high-growing crops, like tomatoes, no recommendation is necessary. This guideline value of no more than one egg per litre doesn't, however, protect children under the age of 15, so when these are exposed by working in or playing in wastewater irrigated fields, additional control measures are needed, for example regular deworming, either at home or at school. This helminth egg guideline is based on epidemiological data, mainly from studies in Mexico, so it wasn't necessary to use QMRA to derive the guideline.